Let me ask the question. Can everybody should be seeing my screen now. And if they aren't, please holler out. Okay, good. I see from Gary that uh, everybody's seeing it. Well, first off, I want to thank the club for doing this. Uh, it's really an honor and a privilege uh, to be able to have a special time just for this kind of thing. Uh, that's really great. And I do greatly, greatly appreciate everything that Sarah has uh, done already for me, as well as, uh, as you know, it promotes uh, the ARRL and so on. It's really great. Okay, um, I'm Scott Yonley, N8SY. Uh, who am I? And why am I running for the Great Lakes Division Director position? Let's see if we can get this going. There we go. Uh, first off, I want to talk about uh, family support, and it's absolutely important. Uh, in jobs like this because you're you're on the road a lot if you're doing the the job so uh my wife of 49 plus years janie kb8 ypw is an arrl member herself and she's also very active uh, with not only helping out at the arrl table many times but uh, she's also been secretary of our local club here in in mansfield and and uh, she's done many different jobs uh, we do have one daughter uh, Wendy, and she's married with three children. That gave me three grandchildren, and uh, I'm in love with them all. i got to be honest. Uh, the oldest of my grandchildren is uh, 16. Yep, she just learned how to drive this year. Oh, boy. <laughs> so she's on the road. Uh, you know, if there is a favorite, if you can say that you have a favorite of the grandkids, uh, actually, it's uh, mine is probably uh, the youngest of the three, Emma. Uh, she is the, she's going to be the engineer uh, of the group. She, she thinks just like an engineer. Uh, I mean, that's just, it's just the way she does things. And she does it very methodically. Uh, my grandson, he is uh, a sports nut. He is into everything. He has a black belt in karate uh, and so on. So they're very active family. Um, they're also in the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts both. So they're, like I say, they're a very active family. My daughter, Wendy, she teaches uh, the elementary slash middle school today, I guess is what they call it. Uh, I'm showing my age, I'm sure. Um, but they call it middle school. She teaches advanced math uh, in that, uh, in the, uh, up at the um, school there in Sunbury, uh, Big Walnut. I was stumbling there trying to remember the school name, so. But uh, anyway, I have support from my family doing all of this. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, being on the road three and four and five days a week uh, takes, can take a toll if, if you don't have the support. In my professional career, I'm a retired automotive and aerospace quality manager and engineer. I work for companies that built component parts for GM, Ford, Chrysler, General Dynamics, Alliant, Technosip. Techno Systems, we always called them ATK for short, uh, and just to name a few. I was responsible for the quality and the component parts produced by our suppliers and also our own manufacturing lines. I was the customer's first line of contact when there were problems. So I do know how to work with customers in stressful times to achieve the best results. I routinely traveled North America visiting with my customers and my suppliers resolving issues and conformance and, and making sure that we stayed in conformance. So traveling's in my blood, folks. Um, had to do it professionally and uh, learned how to, how to do it. And uh, it, it, it takes a, a lot, of, lot out of you if you don't know how to do it right. Uh, my experience with ARRL, which is really what I think you guys are more familiar with. Uh, I've been representing amateur radio for more than 40 years. I am a life member of ARRL. Uh, I'm currently the Ohio Section Manager, the Great Lakes Division Assistant Director. I'm an ARRL official relay station, official emergency station. I'm also Vice Chair of the Richland County Local Emergency Planning Committee. Many of you probably have never heard of that, the uh, LAPC. Um, we are the basic uh, eyes and ears and watchdog over EMA, uh, your local EMA. Uh, we are where a lot of the funding comes from for 
the special equipment and so on. So uh, I'm vice chair on our local planning committee. I'm also on the electronics board here in the village of Lexington, uh, which we buy all of the, our, our committee is the one that recommends for city village council uh, to buy what equipment, uh, what electronic equipment, including radios and computers and you name it, we, uh, we've been involved in it. Uh, I'm on the education committee uh, for the Emergency Management Association of Ohio, EMAO. Um, that is the professional organization for all 88 counties of your EMA directors. Uh, we set up and maintain uh, all of the educational programs uh, for EMA directors all over the state. I'm a member of the Ohio Public and Private Partnership, OP3. Uh, some of you uh, may have recognized that because I've, I've talked about that before in a lot of my newsletters. Uh, OP3 is something that is not unique to the country, but uh, here I will tell you what is unique uh, about Ohio's OP3 is the fact that when we need credentialing, and guys, we have had to use the credentialing. Uh, we have actually state credentialing through this system. I'm a radio officer for the RACES here in Richland County. I wouldn't spell it out, but it's crazy. We just might as well say RACES. I'm also a member of the Ohio Volunteer Organizations Active in Disasters, Ohio VOAD. And like I say, I am also a member of the LIFE. I'm a LIFE member of the Ohio Single Sideband Net. Um, that's the traffic handling net that handles thousands and thousands of pieces of traffic every year uh, through the HF net. Uh, I'm a member of the Quarter Century Wireless, um, webmaster for the Ohio section, the Great Lakes Division, and several clubs and organization websites. I'm also an ARRL Extra Class Accredited Volunteer Examiner. And I do hold uh, something rather unique that most of you probably never heard of. Long before ARRL got involved in the VE testing and, and so on, uh, DARA, the Dayton Amateur Radio Association, uh, had its own program uh, where it certified its own volunteer examiners. And I'm one of 300 of those examiners. And I'm still licensed through DARA today. Uh, as a lot of you here know, I do write a weekly newsletter for ham operators, and it's distributed throughout the country. Actually, I will boldly say it's distributed throughout the world. Uh, folks over in Europe, uh, over in many other parts of the world actually get our newsletter. And I will tell you, I don't have a regulation or anything, so we actually send it out to those who are not ARRL members as well. They need to hear the news too. Last year, 2019, I received the Joe Knight Distinguished Service Award for my work as the section manager of Ohio and for my leadership contributions to the ARRL and its field organization. I'm one of only nine section managers in the country to ever have received this award. And trust me, I cherish it very proudly, I do. It's right off to my right here. In fact, you can see it up right there <laughs> it's it's got a very proud place in my shack here trust me on that one uh youth programs they're of vital importance to our growth in amateur radio and uh i've supported carol perry uh with her radio clubs of america youth activities initiatives throughout the years and assisted her in showcasing many of the talented young hands one of them's down there in that corner down there uh he has a plaque similar to mine but his is for the Hiram Piercy Maxim Memorial Award, uh, which is basically the ham of the year in the country. Uh, Chris was and is uh, a really outstanding young man. He really is. He is now 16 and driving, <laughs> but he is still a part of uh, Carol Perry's program as well as ARRL's youth program. And trust me, uh, this is one kid that just I mean, he really excels in bringing into uh, amateur radio, the younger group. Uh, why did I go with Carol Perry instead of just doing something local? Well, Carol reaches out to way more youth than I could ever reach here in Ohio by myself. And her program's been going on for a good 25 years. So she has a very good sound base. She also has uh, works with 
the Radio Club of America, RCA, and they give out awards and uh, tuitions to kids going to college. So uh, I help support all that with her. So that's a better way, I think, in my opinion, that's a better way of uh, getting youth into ham radio. Uh, my work with ARRL's newest program, ARES Connect, a lot of you have been associated with it already. Uh, I have had a most unique opportunity not, a, not only to work with ARRL staff headquarters every day as their troubleshooter, uh, but I also work with the field organization throughout the country many days. Uh, I'm on the phone with many section managers from all over the country and section ECs to go over what they need to, to, to be able to implement it. Uh, and bring it to life in their section. Uh, the introduction of ARES Connect in the field organization really did not have the best launch that it could have. It was kind of a poor launch. Uh, there was little instruction on how to do things and how they were to work, as well as what the actual expectations of this new system would be. So I took the lead on this. Uh, I kind of just went off onto my own and, and uh, I did months of research and online training through Volunteer Hub and using their videos and uh, using their question and answer sessions, uh, learning their system as best as anybody could. And I gathered input from the section managers and section ECs throughout the country. Uh, I actually meet every week with uh, all of the, well, all of the e section ECs and uh, the section managers throughout the country that come online. Uh, we have a meeting once a week with everybody and I gain in input uh, for best practices for ARES Connect and, and uh, ins and outs. And we've made a lot of changes and strive to, uh, we're still striving to, to even make more. So I've conducted numerous online webinars for groups all over the country uh, to teach them how the new system works and how all the features of it work. And I even wrote a comprehensive article that appeared in uh, uh, the July 15th edition of ARES e-newsletter. Uh, in July. So why am I running for vice director? Well, first off, I truly love amateur radio and the ARRL. If I didn't, I wouldn't be a life member, trust me. Like many of you, I'm troubled with the membership numbers falling every month while the FCC's numbers are gaining in radio licenses. There's more now than there ever has been before. Yet our membership is dropping. Every month it drops a little more. I'm also seeing a clear lack of leadership at headquarters. Uh, I feel we're floating around in this big sea without a rudder. Uh, quite frankly, uh, we need stronger leadership from the board. We need to have the board bring us back around so we're on course again. I do feel we've missed the target with the On Air magazine when it was introduced in, in January. It is an excellent magazine for uh, the newbies coming into amateur radio and those who haven't experienced amateur radio yet. And this is a great way to introduce them into it. Uh, unfortunately, the folks at headquarters decided to get the magazine uh, either electronically or physically. Uh, it had to be an ARRL member and that really, I feel, missed the mark. I wanna change that. I wanna have the on the air magazine something that's distributed. So when you guys do uh, BE testing, for example, you can hand those out to folks uh, as an introduction. Now that you get your license, here's what you can do with it. You know, here's some neat things that are in there that you can learn from and so on. It is a great, if you want to call it a loss leader, okay, so be it, it's a loss leader. But it's, it's one of those things that you really need to do if you're going to promote not only amateur radio, but if you're gonna promote ARRL and why belong, this is what you need to do. You need to have something to hand to those folks that are just coming in. We need to recognize the contributions of our volunteers. Guys, I know uh, they never get recognized well enough. And that's something I wanna change. And here in Ohio, I have done that. Um, I hand out uh, special section manager awards and, and that type of thing to a lot of different people for their achievements and things that they've done that they wouldn't otherwise get recognized for. Um, we need to work harder and smarter if we're gonna be respected as the pillars of support and leadership in the international radio community. Let's face it guys, 
um, ARRL is, is kind of losing ground there. Um, they're kind of standing on their laurels that they've had for 100 years. Um, it's great that ARRL has been around 100 years. I want to make sure that it's around for another 100 years. And I want to make sure that we're leading the way, not, not trailing. Um, I believe in proactiveness, not reactiveness. Youth programs, they're, like I said, of vital, impro uh, of vital importance to us. And I've learned a lot from uh, Carol Perry. Uh, we can grow uh, that a lot in ARRL. There's a lot of things that she's proposed over the years that would work perfect in this kind of thing. I've been a, a, a part of a number of ERISA programs here in Ohio. Uh, if you're not familiar with what ERISA stands for, it's amateur radio on board the International Space Station. Uh, we've actually done two successful uh, ERISA programs within the last couple of years, uh, with a third one in the background here that'll be launching before a whole lot longer, uh, probably in 2021. Uh, they are a great way to get the younger kids interested, not only in amateur radio, but in science. Uh, yes, amateur radio is science. I also think we need to develop those folks in the 27 to 50 year old range too. You know what? We leave them out in a lot of things. Um, and they're a great resource. They've, they've got their family, they've got their home, they've got a job, they're usually settled. What a great resource it would be if we started developing in that range as well. Now, mostly, we need to bring fun back into amateur radio. Yeah, we got field day. Look what it took to get field day to something we could use this year. That shouldn't have happened, guys. That just shouldn't have happened. Um, those rule changes should have happened clear back in February when COVID started taking place and people understood we were gonna be locked down for a while. That's the way that was should have happened. So we have our serious side, but you know what? We have our fun side too. And if you look way back there in that back corner back there on the Ohio section logo, you'll see at the very bottom in big, bold, bold letters, it says it's fun. That's what we've gotta do. We've gotta bring fun back. You know what? If it ain't fun, most people won't do it. And I'm also gonna tell you, and I know you've heard this before, most folks ain't interested in associating with grumpy old men. That's all there is to it. If, you're, if they're not having fun and they're being grumpy and that kind of thing, you're not gonna bring in youth and you're not gonna bring in the 27 to 50 year olds. That's all there is to it. They're gonna say, nah, we got something else better to do other than listen to a bunch of grumpy old men complain and whine about, about what, what they wanted or what they didn't get or whatever. So we need to bring the fun back into it and get the grumpy old men on board so they're not grumpy anymore. And I think we can do that. I really do. It never ceases to amaze me to see just how much talent and willingness to learn and teach there is here in the Great Lakes Division. In Ohio especially. Look guys, um, we are so blessed. Um, there is so much talent here in Ohio. It, it's, you know, you, you, it's just unbelievable. Everywhere you turn, folks are, are willing to help and folks are willing to do things and willing to learn. Uh, with our new program, ARES Connect, Ohio is leading the nation uh, for not only um, how many people are registered in ARES Connect, but how many people are at a level two or level three. We lead the nation with how many people are at that, uh, those two levels. So that's something to be very, very proud of. And I wanna bring along our Michigan friends. They're right behind us and so is our friends in Kentucky. They have a very active program. I'm a part of both programs up in Michigan as well as uh, down in Kentucky as well uh, right now. I'm helping both, uh, both sections out with, with uh, doing statistical analysis for them and helping them teach uh, others that are coming on board with the new system. And I want to be a part of a team, not individual, but a part of a team to not only strengthen the ARRL board, but to bring more openness to the board and to the Great Lakes Division. Guys, um, I know it, it's, a, it's a well overused word. It's called transparency, um, but it is really true. Uh, the ARRL board kind of keeps things still. Uh, some of the old guys up there, the old guards still keep things very close to the chest. They're not sharing information. Um, we're a little more fortunate here. We do hear a little bit more, 
but um, I think we can do better. I really do. And I know we can. It's not even that I think we can. I know we can. I know we can do better with that. And I know we can bring the Great Lakes Division back into where we've got a great newsletter going out um, on a regular basis that's really telling the story of not just what headquarters is doing, but what is the Great Lakes Division doing? What's Ohio doing? What's Michigan doing? What's Kentucky doing? You know, we need to know that. We don't hear that. We don't hear enough of it, and we need to hear more. Um, hearing about, you know, there's a ham fest in Kentucky or in Michigan, that's great. But have you, when, when was the last time you heard about something that went on in Michigan or something that went on in Kentucky? You have it, and we need to, we need to change that. We've got to bring, we've got to turn that around. We've got to bring, and like I say, it's an overused word, the transparency into it. We've got to get more of that information out to everybody. As section manager, I've attended hundreds of ham fests and club functions. I'm always listening to what you guys think and feel and discussing those ideas with our team here in Ohio. The Ohio section cabinet is, is here to help improve. You guys have taken advantage of that uh, with Anthony and, uh, and so on. Uh, we have probably the best uh, Ohio section cabinet or the best cabinet uh, in the country. Uh, I, it's definitely the most talented. Uh, we've got expertise in every field you can think of, uh, and it's growing every day. This is what I want to do as your, as your Great Lakes Vice Director. Um, let's face it, none of us have all the answers by ourselves, but collaboratively, collaboratively uh, we can tackle the biggest problems. We can. And we can really start to move the ARRL and the Great Lakes Division into the right direction. Why me? My record shows the experience working as a team player with volunteers, leaders, and government officials. I have a proven track record of dedication and follow through even when the work gets tough. This is the type of leadership that it will take to tackle the issues and move the ARRL and the Great Lakes Division into the 21st century. As a team, guys, as a team. I thank you for the opportunity to speak about my candidacy. And I appreciate if you would vote for me. Uh, please don't hesitate to contact me anytime with questions and concerns. I'm here for you. You know I am. You can also uh, email me anytime you want. Uh, my phone number is out there for everybody to see. Uh, you can find a detailed full bio about me uh, on my website, nasy.com. Okay, that's the end of my thing. Uh, let's open it up for questions. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Scott. Uh, yeah, just as a reminder for people who joined uh, after we got started, we're using the chat function to uh, sort of virtually stand in line. Uh, everybody is muted, so when I uh, give you uh, when I give you the nod, go ahead and unmute. Ask your question of Scott, and uh, if you would uh, please remute after remute after you ask the question. Uh, that way we can uh, have a good uh, good video copy here. Kind of so. a tongue twister, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm stumbling all over myself. <laughs> all right, uh, first up is uh, going to be Gary, AAHCS. Gary? Okay, I unmuted. Is that a word? Um, I think it is now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it must be. All right, uh, Scott, you know, I read the uh, the newsletter today from the ARRL. And it, it was really curious because they had announced that uh, Phil Temples was appointed as the uh, New England Division Vice Director. Okay. Um, so now he's appointed. I, I'm a little confused. Is that because um, uh, the ex-Vice uh, Director was, uh, is now the, um, I don't know. Well, let, let me tell you how it works. Yeah, um, tell me how it works. Okay. Because I'm, I'm a little confused why, why you're in the middle of, a, of an election here and there's other people being appointed all over the place. Okay. Um, well, first off, uh, back in January, the New England director uh, was uh, appointed as first vice president of ARRL, which left his job open. Well, his job really doesn't stay open long because there's an automatic secession 
uh, built into the board of director uh, rules. So the vice director now becomes the director. However, there is no succession plan for the vice director position. So the New England vice director position has been open uh, since January, uh, and they are just now filling that position. Actually, it was filled uh, a couple of months ago. You're just now hearing about it. Okay, but there's Again, no- part of the transparency problem. <laughs> Uh, you should have heard about it when it took place. Uh, we're in the age of instant media, uh, where I, if the president sneezes, you know about it. Um, okay, so is there ever elections in New England? Yes, um, okay. we're in midterm, um, and, and what he has done. Well, see, there's only uh, the way they do it is a, a, the director and vice director are elected for three year terms. So they what they do is, is five divisions go through an election once a year. So okay. this time it's Ohio and I can't remember what Midwest and, and so on um, are up for election. However, that division is not up for election. So they will fill it by an appointment. Okay. Until the next round. Gotcha. Okay, well, that makes sense, I guess. I, now, uh, the same thing would have happened here when Tom Delaney had decided he didn't want to run. If Tom, Tom, what Tom did is Tom announced that he doesn't want to run for vice chair or vice director, but he will stay on until the end of his term. Okay. So, and the rules term, are the same for in, in every division. In every, correct? yeah. Okay. And the same holds true uh, for the section managers too. Okay. So I, uh, I do have another question if I can be so bold and then I'll, I'll shut up. Um, let's say uh, the worst happens and, and Scott, you do not get elected. Uh, have we lost you as the Ohio uh, section director? No, um, I remain. In fact, my new term as Ohio section manager uh, doesn't start until October 1st. And then I'm, I've been reelected uh, and st I, will, I would serve that two year term. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much. And uh, uh, really appreciate all the information. And Scott, I knew you were a busy guy, but you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> oh no, I, that's just what I have fun with. Oh, well, Mine, I keep it fun. <laughs> well, there you go. All right, thanks Scott, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, uh, Zeke, AB8OU, you're up. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Scott, uh, since you're about to start a two-year term, and if you became the vice director, who would be in line to uh, replace you as Ohio section manager? I, I'm glad you asked that question. That's very good. Thank you, Zeke. I appreciate that. Um, actually, the way it goes for the section managers, um, it would be up to the director and the, uh, well, they used to call it field services uh, manager, uh, but now it's called radio sport manager uh, to place uh, a new person in to fill my remaining term. Now, do I have input to that? Yes, I do. Uh, I have a voice. Uh, it's one of three that, that would be voicing you know, uh, who would replace me. But quite frankly, we have such a great cabinet. Um, there are, I mean, I, I can name three, four, five different people right off the top of my head that would be excellent at replacing me without any problem. And you'd never know I was gone. And, and let me also say, I'll also say it this way. Guys, even if I am elected as vice director, I'm not going away. You're going to see me. I'm going to be there. I'm, I'm still here. Um, I may wear, it'll still be a red badge, <laughs> uh, but it, you know, I'll still be coming to the meetings and, and uh, being, uh, enjoying the fellowship with everybody like I do today. That won't change. And I have talked to Michael Coulter, who is running for director. And I've also talked to Dale, obviously. 
uh, about that, and both have agreed that if I were elected, they, they would have no problem with, it, with me doing what I do. Uh, Scott, uh, you said there is three, four, five people. Can you name five people that would be in the running? Well, you know who all the cabinet are? Right there is, right there they all are. Well, other than Anthony, I really don't know who the cabinet is, especially okay. the okay. Um, well, responsible for Northeast Ohio. All right, um, you have. Well, let's let's just go right from the right from the corners here. Uh, first, you have Bob Winston, uh, W two T H U. You have Tom Sly, uh, W B eight uh, C Q C D. Oh, oh boy, my mind's going nuts. Um, anyway, you have Tom Sly, who's the Affiliated Clubs Coordinator. You have Stan Broadway, uh, our Section Emergency Coordinator. You have uh, uh, John Perrone, who's my Assistant Section Manager. Uh, you have Anthony uh, Lascari, uh, who is our Section Youth Coordinator. They would all, and, and that's just to name a few, okay? There are others out there that also could fill in uh, the same way uh, very easily. Um, and if you want to go outside of the cabinet, one that really sticks out in my mind, uh, John Myers, for example, uh, KD8MQ, uh, he would be another great candidate. Like I say, Ohio is so blessed because we have so much talent that, I mean, it's just out there uh, for, for us to, to tap into. So there's just a ton of people that could be picked. Like I say, I have one voice out of the three. I have one voice, so we'll we'll go from there. Do I have a favorite? Actually, no. Um, they're all very good in their own ways. They all have their own things that that they're very very good in. Does that answer it for you, Zeke? Yeah, it answers it. Uh, I said I guess that's part of the thing. Do we want to lose you? Or not, Again, you're not going to lose me. I'm still here. Um, manager. Well, I will still help in any way that they, whoever takes over once, I will still be there for them. Um, as a vice director, that, that even more so. Um, you know, currently, I'm, I'm helping Michigan. Uh, I'm helping with uh, the section emergency coordinator up there now. Uh, he and I are working collaboratively, if I can use that big word, uh, right now on coming up with a new form and a new way of uh, to run reports and that kind of thing. And I'm forever working with uh, Steve Morgan, uh, the section manager down in Kentucky. Um, we're, we're always on the phone talking back and forth. Uh, so I'm I'm basically your vice vice director now because I'm 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 already doing a lot of that stuff already. So does that does that help ease the pain a little bit? I, I know this is something that's been on a lot of people's mind because I've had a lot of people say that exact same thing, Zeke. Yeah, well, we view the vice director as not having anywhere near the influence or activity as uh, section managers do. And I want to change that. I definitely, that has to change. You know, the Great Lakes Division, and you guys heard me last week uh, tell you, the Great Lakes Division is the seventh largest division in the country. We have got to do a better job of communicating with our people. And that means we've got to get out and see them. So trust me, I'm going to be traveling just as much. In fact, I just had the car fixed this morning. I had new spark plugs put in. So guys, I'm, I'm rearing a roar. <laughs> well, I always thought it was your wife had you traveling because to keep you on the road out of her hair. <laughs> oh, that too, that too. But I, my plan as, as vice director is, is to keep things going just like they are right now, only expand them some. Let's, let's go up to Michigan. Let's, uh, let's get them going. And we definitely got to get our friends down in Kentucky going too. They're, I mean, both places, don't get me wrong, both places have very active programs, but not as active as Ohio. 
One last um, question. As a vice director, do you think you will have any uh, impact at getting the uh, board to be more open and communicative with its members? Actually, I think so. Um, I have been in contact with uh, the, um, well, they call them the transparency group, but essentially the, the, the newer directors that feel change has to come. And um, we've discussed a lot of different things on how we can collaborate. Well, again, collaboratively, uh, but as a team, um, push those initiatives. And yeah, I think we can. I think it takes that kind of push. And I think we can do that. If I didn't, Zeke, I wouldn't be doing this. I'll be honest. I, I, I'm happy at being section manager. Don't think, don't think I'm not. I am. Um, but I also think that it's time that we, we start moving the Great Lakes direction, you know, the Great Lakes division in a more positive direction, more, more toward the 21st century. Um, they've been lagging behind in the technology and in the people. Uh, and I don't mean that there's anything wrong with the people up there. There isn't. Um, they work very hard. They work very smart. But the tools are given are 20th century tools. And that's a shame. We're well into the 21st century. Uh, we need to have them up into the 21st century on the stuff they do. Well, just get the uh, board meetings on Zoom, except for the uh, things that uh, they need to be maintained private. Yeah, I, I agree. I think those things need to happen. We need to have that, that ability to see what our board is really doing. Um, I mean, for so long, it's been, you know, all done behind closed doors type thing. And we really need to, to get out of the dark and, and start saying, you know, the technology is here now. Uh, we, we really need to, to move with the technology. Thank All you. right, up next, uh, Barry, KI8B. Barry? Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Okay. Hey, Scott, I, I, this question isn't directly relative to the, any of the elections, but the uh, one of the few times, well, it's not a few in terms of quantity, but on, on the rare occasion that AWRL reaches out directly to members, at least to me, uh, I get between maybe 15 to 20, a combination of emails or postal mails regarding the Spectrum Defense Fund. And I just wondered if you have a feel for how much of the total resources uh, the board has that are spent on that and how effective uh, any efforts on their part are with the FCC and or Congress. So. I, well, I get a lot of those. And, and of course, once you make a donation, then you just get more mailers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's usually how that, that works. Yeah. Well, I just wondered if, if you have a feeling for, you know, if they're doing a good job or if a good job even can be done. Like, does anybody really going to hear us speak? So that's it. Actually, yes, they do hear us. Um, many, on many occasions, they've heard us loud and clear. Uh, about, you know, things that have not been right. Um, when you speak of the, the actual dollars, no, I really can't tell you for sure because I don't, I'm not privy to those numbers at this point. Um, I do know that every dollar that comes in under the uh, defense fund goes for the defense fund. That I can tell you for sure. Uh, however, how many other dollars are spent on that? I honestly, at this point, do not know. But um, has it been effective? Yeah, I, I feel that it has. Uh, it's been dollars well spent. Does the FCC listen to us? Yes. Um, which is one of the reasons why I'm very disappointed that the ARRL has not responded very quickly and at, at all, really. Uh, with this new newest proposal coming out of the FCC with the $50 fee. Um, I realize they, they want to see 
how things are going to pan out, but um, it is a great concern uh, to many around the country. Um, and what I've heard from a few uh, from the board is, well, it's only $5 a year. What's the problem? Well, you know, yeah, I, I understand that. Uh, I also understand that uh, for us here in Northeastern Ohio, uh, it's not that much money. Uh, but I also hear from our friends down south that it is a lot of money. And you also have to put this in perspective. Um, you know, it's $50 for those new ones coming in to get their tech license. Now, they get their tech license, so they study hard, and they go to get their general. Now, let's say they get their general in six months. Now, it's another $50. And let's say they really study hard, and they get their extra. That's another $50. Well, that's $150 within a year, all for a license. That's a lot of money. I don't care whose wallet it's coming out of. Uh, <laughs> so... You know, you have to put it that way. Now, the one question that has not been answered yet, it's vanity call. Um, if you get licensed and get a call sign that you don't really want, is it going to be $50 for the vanity call change? No one has answered that question. We don't know. So it could be another $50. So now we're not at 150, but we're at 200. Now, granted, the last 50, that's your choice. But think about this. We're, even in my presentation, we said we have to bring youth in. $150 for youth. Are they going to spend that on licenses? No. Let's face it. Let's be real. No. They'll spend it on video games, <laughs> but they won't spend it on a license. I doubt seriously if they're even going to spend it to get the tech license. Is it going to hurt? Yeah, I think you're going to see the numbers drop back dramatically. You know, we've been increasing steadily every month uh, on FCC licenses. Now, I did, of course, my poll on the website, and, and Zeke will tell you this, because he's pointed it out to me a couple of times. It is not scientific, okay? So it just depends on how you want to view this. But I asked that question the week that, that that proposal came out from the SEC. I asked that question of everybody. Um, it, I got the largest response that I had ever gotten out of any of the questions. And it was 60% that said, no, we will not renew if there's a $50 fee. So will this hurt? Absolutely, it will hurt. The numbers, our numbers will go backward. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want our numbers going backwards. I want our numbers to grow. So this would be counterintuitive to growth or anything other than fattening up the general fund for the U.S. Treasury. And I'm not sure that I'm willing to give them another $50. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know. But it, it comes down to, you know, is it necessary? Well, you know, a few years back, the FCC eliminated the fees for the vanity licenses because they said it just wasn't worth the dollars spent. They'd rather do it just with the labor that they already had in it um, and not charge because then they don't have to mess with the credit cards and all that stuff that they were having to mess with. It also poses some other questions about you know, when you do the VE testing, who's going to collect the $50? You know, that hasn't been talked about either. Where is that going to be collected at? Is the FCC going to collect it? Or are we going to collect it and turn it over to the FCC? How will that work? These are all things that, you know, I feel are important to not only the hams that are already here, but also the new ones that haven't got their license yet, that's important to know. Because um, if they pass things like this, how is this all going to play out? 
And those are questions that do need to be answered. Barry, are you? Is that oh, an no, your answer was fine, Scott. Thanks. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to okay. jump in here. So, yeah. Scott, I know you and I have talked about this uh, before. Um, I don't know if you were expecting me to, <laughs> to ask this question or not, but um, I, I had, and I had even, you know, I've talked to you about this. I actually even exchanged a couple of emails with the old, uh, the, uh, the uh, um, Howard, um, Michelle, Michelle um, Michael. The, Michael, yeah, Michael, yeah, Howard Michael. Michael, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, about when when will the ARRL move from geographic based or a extreme a heavy focus on geographic based in person ham radio organizations? Not that there's anything wrong with local clubs and you know the geographic sections and things like that, but you know uh, people are are united online now through interests rather than geography. And the ARRL doesn't have anything for that. Okay. And and Howard had made a comment in an email where we, he was said, you know, that the ARRL was gonna come out with some new community building tools to help. I mean, if you don't have a website, you don't exist. And lots of radio clubs don't have websites or good websites or maintained websites. You know, we're still talking about newsletters in 2020. You know, is there, is there something moving forward on that? Or do you have, you know, is there something you want to push for in that area? Absolutely. Um, I'll give you a little history. Back when this website that we have currently on headquarters, up, up at headquarters, back when it was being built uh, back in 1999, they, um, they wanted to give every section they, they recognized that not every section had a website, so they wanted to give every section the opportunity to have a web presence. So they essentially off to the side, and you never really hear about it, although you have a link to it. When you log in, you can actually go to the Ohio section portion of ARRL if you want, but it's not talked about. Now, when they originally came out with this, I was one of the selectees for the committee because I was already doing websites. And when we sat down in that committee, most of us said the same thing, you know, we need, you know, two or three pages to tell, you know, who the club president is and, you know, go through the whole, the whole schmear of what most, you know, most club websites do. And then we wanted to be able to put pictures on and so on. And we were told, okay, we'll, we'll take that and we'll see what we can do. The end result um, was, is we have each one of the 71 sections has its own individual web page. It's a single page. Every one of them is designed exactly alike. We have a text area that we can post text to. And that's it. You can't add pictures. You can't add anything. It, we complained vehemently about that. Um, I need more. I need, you know, if we're going to do this right, we need to really, you know, bring it in. Um, so they gave us the ability to put link, links on. And so all I'm able to do at this point is I can put, um, text in there. I'm limited to 10,000 words. So you have to be careful even uh, with a newsletter. Uh, you know, you're, um, even if it's just a monthly newsletter, you have to be careful. 10,000 words doesn't, isn't that much. I mean, it's about five, six pages. So, you know, you don't have much space. Then, um, you know, if you want to grow, you can't. Uh, you're limited. So yes, um, there's supposed to be a new website that's being designed in the background now. Uh, I have already pitched that we need to have more presence, each one of the 71 sections. 
So we'll see where that goes. Hopefully we will get more space as time goes on. But I will tell you at current, uh, if they put it on the same server that the one that's there now, um, it won't happen. That server is uh, about 12 years old. Now that doesn't sound like eternity, but I will tell you in web presence, that is an eternity. That's IT eternity. <laughs> yeah, that is. It's, it's IT eternity. I mean, it, it's backwoods technology compared to what the servers today. I mean, even the server we're using for Zoom right now is probably what, a hundred times more advanced uh, than what they've got right now. Uh, and so we've got to bring that up to speed. Now, they have made a proposal uh, two years ago, the board approved uh, to spend the money on buying new servers and buying the new technology. Uh, that was two years ago. We're still in that phase of, okay, what do we do? Um, they did this year purchase a new payroll uh, software program, which is uh, current, well, which got implemented about a month and a half ago. <laughs> but that's, that's about it. Um, so we've got to get the infrastructure. Now, I, I want to also emphasize infrastructure. Um, when we talk about infrastructure, we all think, you know, computers and radios and the hardware. Uh, we also have another problem going on. Uh, or uh, let, me, let me turn that around. I don't want to say problem. We have another opportunity. And when you think about it, most of you folks never have much contact with headquarters, the actual personnel up there. I do. I, I have contact with them almost every day. Um, we have got an aging workforce uh, at headquarters. Many of them are retirement age right now, and a number of them are going to be retirement age within the next year or two. Now, you know, any, any good company looks at their, their workforce, sees the median age, understands that, you know, the older ones are going to drop off, they're going to retire, which they've earned, and so on. But there also needs to be, they need to be cultivating that new group to come in so that when the older ones start retiring, the new are already trained, at least on the basics. Well, we haven't been doing that. Um, that's not been happening at headquarters. Uh, they hire somebody new when they need somebody new. Um, that's all. There's nobody back there coming through the ranks to start, you know, learning and learning the knowledge and, and learning the history and, and so on. And that scares me even more than just losing a server, guys. I mean, you lose that history. You lose that ability to know where things are stored, to know where things go, or to know what we did in the past so we don't repeat mistakes. Those are the things that are concerning me even more. We need to start cultivating those people and bringing them along, and we just aren't doing that right now. So as a businessman, i got to be honest with you, we're failing at headquarters for that, in my opinion. Well, I mean, and that's kind of what it seems like to those of us, you know, downstream of some of that. I mean, you know, even things like the VEC processing you know, I'm, I'm, they do a great job with what they have, but, you know, the fact that that isn't, you know, computerized and automated in 2020 is, I mean, just seems like a shame. But, yes. but specifically, what about, um, you know, going back to the interest-based communities, you know, new media type things like Discord and, you know, I mean, I'm not even talking about like social media, right, with like Twitter or Facebook. I mean, my daughter's 13, right? She doesn't use any of those things. I mean, it's Snapchat, and I'm not sure how you do amateur radio on Snapchat, but, you know, but Discord, you know, some of those types of, you know, dynamic communities, is, is there, like, are we looking into that, or is, are you, or can you push I for can that? I push for that. Uh, are they looking into it? They did, um, and they did some research. In fact, the research showed that it was needed. And that's why they came out with the, the statement they did. However, 
you're seeing the result. <laughs> they haven't moved forward. And that's the stuff we've got to start moving forward on. Because that even sounds that even some of that is if even if you didn't hire somebody to do it, but you got to, you know, you looked across the sections, you know, who are the, you know, you know, you talked about um, the, the, the kid who won the, um, the, the maximum award, oh. you know, and I don't know, and I don't know what his interests are, but it seems oh. like if you want to get youth involved, you know, you could, you know, get a, a handful of them, you know, uh, you know, some vet them somehow, you know, and, and turn them loose with some headquarters type support on, establishing that type of community yeah, I, I mean it, it seems like there's lots of people that would love to do that as a, just a little sliver of their week but you know I, I there's no way to do it about a year and a half ago they hired two gals um to specifically take over those kind of duties but they haven't really done that um there's been really nothing um you know, no real, no real activity that any of us have seen uh, coming out of that. I mean, there should have been some fruits by now of that labor, and there, there just hasn't been. I agree wholeheartedly with that's, you. That's the only way you're going to connect with youth is if you use the media, the youth. I mean, the youth are not, my daughter, my daughter doesn't use email. She uses email to get password recoveries for Snapchat, <laughs> you, yeah, you, know, absolutely, you know, every, absolutely. all the, you know, my, I have a, I have a good, a friend of mine at work who does um, first robotics. I don't know if you've ever seen that a um, hundred percent of the, of the, of his group. And a lot of the groups we deal with, he deals with are organized around discord. Yep. You know, we're, we're, I mean, you, it's, you know, we're, I mean, I, I don't use discord, uh, you know, I'm 42, <laughs> You know, I'm I'm not the target demographic for those kind of things, but we you know we got to reach out in that media. We definitely have if to. If they're going to, if they're going to do it. That's right. And if we're going to bring those youth along, we've got to start thinking in those terms. And right now, you have some of the board. Um, it's very close, um, and I really feel this election uh, will tip the scale, uh, either going via the transparency type thing or going back to the old way that we were doing things. It's going to be one or the other. Um, I hope to bring it to the 21st century. Obviously, we need to go that way. That's, that, you know, if you're going to develop the youth, you've got to go with what they're doing. That's all there is to it. Um, like I say, they hired two gals uh, about a year, year and a half ago to take care of the social media and you know, all of the new technologies that are coming out, you know, TikTok and all that. And, you know, what were the fruits? Well, we haven't seen any. Why haven't we seen any? We hired two people for it. They've been absorbed into other areas, uh, as best I can figure out. I, I honestly don't know where they went because um, they, they kind of went by the wayside and we haven't heard anything more. Um, why I'm not sure because you know if we're like you said if we're going to bring in youth this is what we've got to do all right uh going back to the queue uh Zeke's got another question okay uh one thought on the uh, licensing uh, fee that's been proposed I have the uh thought that it is an effort to uh, reduce the amateur population as a means of justifying uh, reducing amateur spectrum, especially up in the uh, gigahertz range where uh, there's a commercial market for it. Absolutely. Uh, 3.5 gigahertz is being looked at now. Right. So I'm, that's one of my suspicions is that's the basis for the uh, license fee. Oh, there's Anthony. <laughs> um, Zeke, I will tell you, um, you know, and, and for the whole group, not everybody is unhappy with this $50 fee. Now, I say that in honesty because uh, this $50 fee goes across the board for licensing. And those folks with GMRS licenses now currently pay $70. So they'll get a $20 a year, well, a $20 a license uh, reduction. 
So they're, they're quite happy with this idea. <laughs> I had a second question. And, uh, escape me for a moment. Let me think what it was. Uh, concerned youth. Uh, you know, I see a lot of the uh, younger folks, the youngsters, they come in, they go, they sort of plateau and lose interest. And for your uh, middle-aged or your, uh, what, 27 to 50, was it that you said uh, people, they get involved in, uh, you know, their work and their family lives, which reduces uh, their participation. And I'm not sure how you would go about uh, keeping their interest up. Well, you make, you make it fun. Uh, field day, um, NVIS day, uh, parks on the air, uh, all these kind of things. And, uh, you know, we've got one of the experts and I will say, Anthony, no matter what you may say, you are one of the experts, uh, with section youth and with, uh, bringing youth into the groups and so on. And I thank you for your service for that. Uh, we have been blessed with having Anthony and he's been doing an excellent job, uh, getting the youth excited about, you know, they call it STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math. And, you know, amateur radio is all of that. Uh, it really is. It's all of that. And, it, you know, if we bring in good programs, like what Anthony is introducing now uh, to a lot of the, uh, he's, he's done a, several national programs, uh, and showing, you know, how can I re, you know, how can I introduce the newness of amateur radio into these folks where they, they don't think it's an, you know, just an old man's type thing, you know, there's, there really is something in there for the younger generation. Um, this is what it's going to take. It's going to take guys and, and bringing like Anthony along and, and so on. It's going to take all of that and more to start producing YouTube videos for one. Uh, another is actually doing online sessions, just like tonight. We need to have more of that. Uh, AWRL has got to take the lead in doing online training and online and, and making it exciting once again. So there's a number of things that we can do uh, in, in that line that, that would make it very exciting for youth as well as that um, younger um, adult group as well. Well, you look, they're doing a lot of that stuff. You just look at the number of uh, YouTube videos on uh, amateur radio and electronics, but they're not being done by the ARL, which I guess is part of your point. That, right. uh, so those are that's all occurring outside of the ARRL. And here's the thing. You know, the league does not have to produce it um, in, in order to make it good. There are a number of YouTube videos out there that have been produced by people all over the globe that are excellent videos. Um, there's currently one going on right now. Uh, it's kind of behind the scenes for you guys, but it's being done for the section managers. It's all about WinLink. It, it was a 12-week program. And they, they take an hour and they do this, this video layout of how to get started in WinLink and what it's all about, how to do it, and what to do, and so on. Um, these are going to go out to the general public. Um, the last good video that's been produced by AWRL was the 100th anniversary video done four years ago. Uh, it's an excellent video. Uh, I take away, you know, I, I, I be honest with you, I still go back and look at it every so often because it, it is such a good video. But it was, it's now four years old. We need to bring more videos and more of that type of thing. But it doesn't have to be produced by ARRL. Now, can ARRL put a link to those up there? Yeah, they can. Can they put that into their magazine? and say, hey, you want to learn about DMR or Fusion or know how to program your radio, go here, do this, you know, watch this video. It's excellent. It'll teach you how. Those are the things they don't want to seem to do. 
and we need to bring them into look guys you can't you can't be good at everything you you can't be the answer all no one expects you to be there are so many other people out there that can help and we need those other expertise out there that that are out there we need to tap that and say look if you don't mind we want to use use your video for a link and you know what i i think just doing that alone that alone would start to bring in those people we're losing well i think uh, like many other societies they want to uh, capture the revenue stream from the material that is produced therefore they're not interested in uh linking to uh, outside sources and they're going to have to get out of that mindset that's one of the things that i'm hoping to draw them away you know not everything has to be tied to the all-american dollar um you know there are some things that that 49 dollars should pay for. thank you scott you're welcome yeah, you know, I just I'm going to abuse my moderator, <laughs> my moderator just for a second here. You know, um, you know, there are a number of people in our area who, you know, who create content, you know, little YouTube videos and web articles. And I think that the ARRL would find that most people would be like, oh, great, the ARRL put a link to my thing in, you know, QST, or what would you like me to talk about? I mean, you know, QST is like, you know, we'll pay per word for articles, but most people are going to do it because they want to do it. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think I think that if, if they would focus less on QST as a magazine and more on getting content to people, the content doesn't have to be polished because that's not the age we live in anymore. And see, that's the you're you're absolutely right. You, you're you're dead spot on. Um, we need to get them off of this idea that it has to be that so-called excellence that ARRL is supposed to bring. Sometimes we need to just tap into what's already there. You know, why aren't we reinventing the wheel? Um, yeah. and, and the crazy part is, is we're, you know, they're, they're still trying to reinvent the wheel. But the problem is, is the wheel is, is spinning so much faster than they can keep up with. And they're being run over by the wheel that they're trying to reinvent. And yeah. that, that doesn't serve anybody. That just does not serve anybody. But like yeah. I say, you know, I, and, and you tapped onto this. I, I will tell you, uh, Ken, um, OED, produced a, a little, he and I produced a little video, oh golly, what, three, four years ago on how to program an open spot. Now, for kicks and giggles, I just, I, you know, it's on my website, so I can see, you know, who's who's really going at it and who's who's selecting it and so on. Just like any webmaster can do, if, you know, if he's got his website set up right, he can monitor what pages are actually being viewed. And um, even to this day, Ken's video is still outperforming just about everything else out there. Uh, between that and uh, Andy Krell's code plug for uh, an MD380. I mean, it's crazy when you think about it. Those are old, old, old uh, code plugs and videos and that. And, you know, the technology, I mean, good heavens, we're on open spot three now. <laughs> and, and yet they're still using those videos. Well, you know what? It's because they're good. They're, they're good. You can learn something. You can actually set it up by doing this. So those are the things that ARRL has got to start getting its mind wrapped around that we, we can't do it all ourselves. We're going to have to support other people and getting them to help. And yes, I, I'm going to push hard for that. I really am because there's just... We're, we're so blessed, even in, you know, just Ohio section, to have this much talent that we, you know, it's, it's a shame not to tap into that. And like I said, you can't, you can't be an expert at everything. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we have a video up on the Sarah YouTube channel that got 2,500 views because I threw up a video of the generator box I built for field day to keep it quiet. 
<laughs> I mean, you got to tap into that stuff. So, all right, uh, Stefan, NAWB. I think he was up next. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate that. Thanks, Scott, by the way, for all that you're doing. And uh, I hope that you're doing good through all this stuff uh, going on. But, hey, a couple things just to piggyback, just basically to piggyback and then one question. Um, yeah, I've been talking with, uh, and I'll, this is to piggyback what Jason was saying. I've been talking with Maria Soma, who gave me all the information to tap in. This is uh, probably in June, I think, that we talked. Um, tap into the exam tools. Um, for uh, amateur VEC testing, which are good and I like them. Um, but like Jason was saying, it's sad to see that an organization as big as ARRL isn't leading the pack. Now I'm not, I'm not belying that. I'm just saying I'm piggybacking. We're gonna probably be looking and discussing uh, using exam tools shortly. Maybe the beginning of next year, I'd like to get that process all ironed out, uh, but uh, but it's just, you know, it's it's interesting that ARRL, the biggest uh, amateur radio organization in North North America, and the world knows them, you know, isn't leading a little bit more in that respect, like you were saying. Um, and the other thing I was going to ask you, and it was just a simple question, can we can we expect to do more uh, interoperability in the future with organizations such as Mars? when they do some of their higher high level um, tests or uh, uh, I always forget what they call them <laughs> tests or uh, um, the things when they do their their system checks and they have everybody on lo on the air doing things and and uh, I'm just asking if that's something that we might be able to get even more involved in when they do that because or even more organizations because interoperability that's what we do one of the reasons i got into ham radio was for that reason so just a quick question for that but i appreciate you scott for all you're doing and uh and uh, keep safe my friend um okay to answer your question yes um in fact this latest uh, well the set coming up october 3rd and 4th the uh, set weekend uh, we will have a big huge chunk uh, of the SET itself as part of Mars. Uh, so there's, there is a connection between the two. Um, guys, I don't know how well or how close you've been following um, with what we're doing statewide uh, for SET, but we also are now being incorporated in to FEMA's plan. So a number of activities that weekend are going to be coming from Washington, D.C. Uh, and you're going to start hearing messages coming up out of Washington, D.C. aimed at us and a few others that are involved in the SE, in, in our black, quote, black swan uh, SET this year. So you're going to see more of that interoperability uh, between us and Red Cross. Uh, in fact, Red Cross is having another uh, session uh, like they did not too long ago. There's going to be another test uh, through Red Cross coming out. I think it's November 5th, if memory serves, uh, when it's going to be. You'll hear more about that soon uh, because we'll be a part of it. We are actually a part of it as well. So those things, yes, we are going to come out with that. Now, do I want to take that more than just Ohio? Absolutely. That needs to be countrywide. We need to do this countrywide. But if nothing else, we need to do it in the division itself, Kentucky, Ohio, and Michigan. Now, I know Kentucky is going to play with us as well as Michigan this year. So it'll be the first time that all three sections in the Great Lakes Division have actually played together. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works. Um, and I'll, I'll explain something about the uniqueness between the three. Um, here in Ohio, our EMA is an independent organization, like it was supposed to be originally. Uh, when EMA was actually, you know, when FEMA was actually designed right after 9-11, it was to, to tie in, all, it was supposed to be that center point to tie in all of the government agencies together. Well, that never happened because obviously the Navy said, this is fine, 
and the army did the same thing and you know and, and, and the cia did their thing and the fbi did their thing and you know so on and so on and nobody really played well together in the same sandbox so fema kind of got put in there and it's an organization all by itself too um here in ohio however uh, FEMA does have a lot of authority that other states don't see. Uh, in Michigan, for example, EMA is run by the what we know as the Highway Patrol. Um, they don't have a separate EMA. In Kentucky, their EMA is actually run by the National Guard. Just to show you how much different all of this works, uh, just between the three neighboring states, um, it's hugely different because Ohio's EMA is totally independent. Um, we work with all of those agencies, but EMA is an agency by itself, and it's a governing agency. So, but to answer your question quickly, yes, uh, we will be involving Mars more uh, as we go along in a lot of these scenarios that we're doing. And not just Mars, but a lot of other government agencies as well. And that is to bring that interoperability to whatever game we're happen to be playing at the time. All right, that was the uh, that was the last person who checked in. Does anybody else have a question that they want to ask Scott before we? Oh, Anthony, uh, go ahead. You got your hand up. Well, I was just going to uh, second something Scott said, and I'm sorry I didn't get here for the beginning, so Scott may have already talked about this, but one of the things um, that happens with AWR projects is they can take uh, a year or years to, they can start out with really good intentions, but take forever. I know because I'm personally involved in a project that's now pushing uh, 13 months, and it's been sitting in the can ready to go, and I'm just waiting for people to have access to it, but it hasn't happened yet. So it sometimes can even when they do move forward on good projects, they can take a long time. Now, this so. is what I was alluding to by, you know, they, Anthony is part of a national program here um, that has been, Anthony, can you, I, I know it's still not supposed to be talked about much, but can you expound just a little bit, give them yes. what you're doing? There are uh, about between five and eight uh, classes that are going to be available online to AWRL members in a variety of topics, basic electronics, basic radio, but I did one on contesting and it's going to be six modules you go through. Uh, some of them have voiceover, some you read on your own. There's uh, little quizzes to take and there's uh, a guide that goes along with it called the contesters notebook that you get to download and have all the resources and uh, it's done but we're waiting because there's another project that it's tied into and the other project isn't done yet. So even though our project is pretty much done, they're waiting until they get the computer changes as far as members logging in to get access to things. And I voiced my frustration probably more than I should have, but uh, I did it anyway. But uh, Remember what I told you about the infrastructure? Here, yes. here, here we are. <laughs> um, but I'm one of those people that I'm a very pragmatic person when it comes to helping other people. So when I have something I want to share with people. So for example, that presentation I put together this summer on uh, social distancing, distancing for field day, that ended up having over 2,800 hits on it, uh, on that presentation. Uh, if I would have did it through the AWRL, it would have been ready next uh, spring, just in time for us to be done with the whole process. So, um, it is difficult. Now, one thing that they have moved fairly quickly on is the 30-minute uh, lunchtime uh, webinars that they've been doing. So take a look at the webinars. Those have been moving forward pretty quickly, and they've been very pragmatic about just getting people to do them and getting them done. So I, I applaud that aspect. That's the way things, I think, should be moving forward. But that's a very minor portion of this. I think there's this whole idea that everything has to be perfect and we don't have time for that to happen. Um, another little shameless advertisement is the CFAR Club is going to be starting a tech class all online starting on October 4th. So if you know anyone that's interested in a tech class, we're going to be doing tech class and then general class starting in January. But one of the differences is it's going to be all online. And we, we plan on do, probably continuing that even post uh, uh, 
COVID because we just want to be able to reach out to anyone anywhere in the state or even beyond the state and uh, do classes that way. And uh, let me ask you, Anthony, now, how much input did ARRL headquarters give you on that? On the classes? None. There you go. This is where they need to be proactive. Online classes should, that, that should be a no-brainer. I, mean, I think it's really important for, for younger hams, too, because the whole idea of getting a ham to go somewhere, uh, if they don't have a driver's license, means that the parents have to go somewhere. And do they really want to drop them off with some strange group of men that they've never met before and leave them at some library room? It's like, no. So I think the idea of having them online is a real good way for youth also, one of the things we're going to be doing, too, is in this class, we're going to be depending on people reading the material and going through the material on their own. We're going to be there to help them. We're not going to be there to drone on endlessly, hopefully. So the idea is we want them to move forward at their own pace. And we're sort of stuck. We wish we could do online examinations through one of the two organizations that we normally do them through, but both AWRL and Laurel have drugged their feet on the online based exams um, something i learned last night uh from the section managers uh anthony there and for you guys too uh w5yi actually has an online testing yeah um, so what uh, it's very very limited it's going through texas if i remember right that's the group that's actually uh responsible for it but they're doing uh everything online and then they're submitting everything through like, you know, like Laurel does, it's going through electronically instead of through all the paperwork that ARRL is still doing. Um, now I know the new program ARRL has introduced is, is eliminated the paperwork finally, where, you know, but you still have that to send in regardless. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it, they're now just starting to go that way. But the, I was looking real quick here. I was looking to see if I saved the link, and I did not. Um, but I'll get the link, and you really need to know about that because that's the, the latest one because it's all being done online now. It's, it's a primer that, that works and is a proven primer that, that really does work to do this all online. And that keeps everybody safe. And again, like you were saying, Anthony, you're not, you know, you're not, taking your kid to the public library or to some club meeting, you, you don't know who's there, you don't know anything about these guys, you're dropping them off for a couple hours and, you know, who knows what can happen. I mean, you know, in, in today's world, that's not a good thing for kids. You don't want to do that. I mean, when I grew up, yeah, it was all what we did, but today, no, you know, we, and with the technology that we have, it's silly not to have something like that. Are there any other questions? This is your last chance to ask Scott any of your burning questions about what he's going to do when we elect him vice director. Like I said, I don't have all the answers. I, I, I will depend on you folks uh, to tell me what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and what we need to change and that kind of stuff, just like I always have. And whether you knew it or not, um, that weekly question that I put up on the website, that really helps guide me as to what you're thinking out there. Um, there is, there's so much back behind that, that, you know, it, it's just like, even though it's just one question, and this week is about your smoke detector and your batteries. Well, you know what? I, I, I've had a couple of comments. Well, batteries now are 10 years, you know, have 10 years life. Yep, they do. You're right. But do you ever test it to find out, does it actually work? When is the 10 years up? <laughs> I mean, it could be at the end of the 10 years right now. Don't you want to change your battery? That's Damn why man. That's why they came out with the program, spring and fall, you change the batteries. Stefan, did you have another question? Yeah, I did. Uh, appreciate that. Last one. Real quick, kind of funny, but I might as well just say it. So I know you said this earlier, Scott, <clears throat> that they need to get people behind that are for the for the people that are getting older and uh, getting to the age where they need to be replaced or they will get tired and they'll they'll fall off the switch, as they say. 
Mm -hmm. um, um, and also the people that are doing the possibly an IBM mainframe with a pancake drive. Um, how do somebody actually get involved on that side of the house? Like you were saying, how do people actually, because ARR web, web page is a beautiful page to go to and the building in Newington is a wonderful place to visit and you open the door and you hear the, ah, ah, ah. but you know, I'm just, you know, the, the actual legat, how does somebody like, I got a year and a half and I'm going to retire mm -hmm. and I'd love to do something else. So how does somebody take what we love to do and actually get involved in the air and not on your level, I'm saying on the nuts and bolts level, of what needs to be done when those people finally decide that the dead man switch in their HT that they fell off of, now they're communicating just a blank noise somewhere in the um, world. That's been the problem. Um, they only hire when they need, and they, you know, they rarely ever put that out there. Uh, the CEO and the EM man, uh, director were the only two positions, but those were managerial positions. Um, as far as the infrastructure inside, they really don't, they really don't advertise it. They don't tell you. Um, there is a position open right now uh, for, uh, to manage the affiliated clubs. So, uh, which is something else we haven't even really discussed yet. But that's something else that's really important. And I'm glad to see, you now it's a brand new position. Um, so, and, and they're taking, you know, basically resumes for that. So, but as far as like the IT department, no, you never hear about when those jobs open up. Um, the board usually knows, and that's where that quote transparency needs to happen a little bit more because we've got a heck of a lot of talent out there that's willing to, you know, volunteer their time. And uh, I know, like with me, and I do the troubleshooting for ARES Connect, that is something that, you know, if, if we did it on an official basis, they would probably not allow me to do, because they wouldn't hire anybody. So... I, I hate to say it that way, but that's the way it's been. So hopefully, uh, once I get elected uh, and get on the board, we can make those things a little bit more transparent and maybe have like a, uh, a bulletin board that says, you know, these jobs are going to be coming out. I mean, heck, there's, there's, you know, there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing that, putting the, you know, at least the now hiring out sign out front. By the way, uh, I, I was just going back to the 100 year anniversary video. Um, I found it very interesting. A couple of people in that video were, uh, worked for one of my suppliers that is only about, uh, about a mile down the street, literally from headquarters. So when I used to go out to have, you know, I used to have to go visit them. Of course that wasn't, you know, that big a chore. I like going out there. Um, I would go there and of course, you know, do my thing at the, at their facility and that, and, and then, uh, of course the afternoon we always left open and they, they kind of understood that the afternoon was open so I could go play up at W1AW. <laughs> Had to mix the C, you got to keep it fun. You see, that's, that's the thing, you know, it would be very dry and boring if I just did a, a supplier visit and that kind of stuff and did the assessments that I was supposed to do for, you know, automotive and all that and, and for aeronautical. But, um, you know, when you mix it with what you have fun with, now it's no longer a chore. <laughs> and by the way, nobody in our plant ever went out there before, before I did. And nobody since then has ever gone out there because they don't want to travel. All right, any other questions for Scott before we wrap it up tonight? I just have one quick comment. I want to thank everybody for coming and thank you for the questions. Uh, anybody has any afterthoughts or whatever, you can call me or write me an email or 
just grab a hold of my shoulder or whatever whenever you see me or whatever um, and let me know and, and we'll we'll talk about it we'll try to get you answers if I don't have answers uh, I'm a very open person so if there's something that you need to know or want to know that you may not want to discuss here in front of the group that's fine I understand and like I said give me a call or write me an email and we can take it from there thank you group for for being so supportive. I really, really greatly appreciate everything you've done. Thanks. All right, thanks, Scott. Appreciate you, uh, appreciate it. And uh, we'll get this up on the website. Thank you.